Okay, so more than any other topic that I get asked about, I get asked about Apple Music and high-res audio the most. And the general gist is almost always the same. It's how to get high-res audio out of Apple Music and into a hi-fi or headphone system. Now, we made a video about this a couple of years ago where we found that the only really reliable way to get high-res from Apple Music and into our loudspeakers or headphones was to connect an iPhone or an iPad to a DAC over USB. But in 2023, things have changed. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0, the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, things have changed on the hardware front in 2023 for Apple Music. And as per our recent video on AirPlay, we have begun to dig a little deeper into the software side. And this video will, among other things, address the Chromecast what about us amongst you. But first, let's start with a little bit of tech talk to make sure absolute beginners aren't left behind. So we need to remind ourselves that CD quality streams come down the pipe at 44.1 kilohertz and with 16 bits for each of those samples. And anything higher, like 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, or 192 kilohertz, is usually, by most people, classified as high-res audio. Now, the number of hertz is essentially the number of samples per second in the audio stream. But those higher sample rates almost always come with a higher bit depth, e.g., 24 bit slash 96 kilohertz. And the bit depth refers to the number of possible values that can be written to each sample. So for example, a 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz stream, so CD quality, houses 44,100 samples per second with each of those samples sitting at one of 65,536 possible values. Whereas a 24-bit slash 192 kilohertz stream, so really the maximum we can get from Apple Music, features 192,000 samples per second, with each sample housing one of, I'm going to try and remember this, I think it's 16,777,216 values. Now, one of my favorite Apple Music features is its tvOS app. But as we covered in our 2021 video, the Apple TV resamples all incoming streams to 48 kilohertz before sending the data onwards. And even if it didn't do it, the TV to which it is attached almost certainly would, especially if it's running an Android operating system, because Android tends to resample everything to 48 kilohertz. And this effectively cuts high-res streams off at their knees. And it messes with CD quality streams too, because it resamples everything from 44.1 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz. And what we want is for our CD quality streams to arrive at the Apple TV as 1644.1 and leave at 1644.1, no bits changed. And this is often referred to as bit perfect playback. Now, we also learnt in 2021 that macOS didn't have the automatic sample rate switching features of iOS and iPadOS. And that tends to keep the bit perfect idealists away from macOS because effectively things get resampled. And macOS still doesn't have automatic sample rate switching. 
This means that everything is resampled to whatever sample rate we have set in our audio MIDI setup panel. Now, pragmatists won't care. That's me, really, I guess. But idealists will say, over my dead body. And as we covered in our video two weeks ago, AirPlay won't cut it for high res, or in some cases, not even CD quality. Because Apple Music streams travel through the phone on their way to the network streamer in the hi-fi rack. And the Apple Music app will adapt its output according to whatever network streaming endpoint we are using. So as we saw, it tops out at CD quality when streaming to an AirPlay 1 device, like the now defunct Airport Express. High-res audio, forget about it. And Apple Music streams are dropped down, bizarrely, to lossy AAC quality when streaming from the Apple Music app to an AirPlay 2 device. Moreover, Apple AirPlay transmission is limited to Apple devices, right? But what about Google Chromecast? I do get asked this a lot. Now, it can carry CD quality streams from Apple Music servers in the cloud to the network streamer in the hi-fi rack. And it doesn't drag them through the phone in the process, which I think is a real win. But unfortunately, it suffers three limitations from the way I see it. Number one, it's not gapless. Number two, there's no Chromecast button on Apple Music's iPhone app. And then there's Google Chromecast's inconsistent behavior. Because I dug out my original Chromecast puck from a cupboard, a Chromecast audio puck. Now that technically supports up to 2496. But I set it up and no matter what high res I fed it from Apple Music, I could only get the connected DAC, in my case, a MyTech Brooklyn Bridge 2 to show the arrival of 24-bit slash 44.1 kilohertz streams, which was a little bit frustrating. I don't know why this is. Don't shoot the messenger. Besides, the Google Chromecast audio puck is long since discontinued, and that really leaves most Chromecasters with third-party implementations like the Wim Pro Plus that we looked at recently. And yet a high-res stream sent from an Android phone's Apple Music app gets downgraded for some reason to 16.44.1 on its way to the WIM Pro Plus. Again, that's what my Brooklyn Bridge 2 DAC is telling me. And it's also, interestingly, what the WIM Home app tells us as well. I want to interrupt this video to bring your attention to the deluxe edition of Tricky's Maxinque that came out last week, I think, because Maxinque is one of the finest albums of the 90s. And the 2023 reincarnated version was remastered at Abbey Road. And interestingly, though, the mastering engineers that did the remaster didn't dynamically compress the living daylights out of the original 12 songs. In fact, I would argue that this remaster sounds even better than the 1995 original. And because this is a deluxe edition, we also get 16 bonus tracks that include re-recorded versions of six songs, a radio session, which is excellent actually, and some other odds and ends. So we get 28 tracks all up. At least that's what we get if we buy the three LP set or the two CD set, but, if we head on over to Apple Music or any other streaming service, the 2023 edition of Max & Quay is 49 songs long. So we get an extra, what is it, 21 songs? And they are mainly made up of alternative versions and remixes. But at almost four hours of music, that's positively monstrous and well worth checking out. Now, back to the video.
Well, okay, so how do we sidestep all of this kind of like if, buts and maybes nonsense? Essentially what we want really to get bona fide high res out of Apple Music into our hi-fi system is a network streamer that runs the Apple Music app natively. And in 2023, that means a network streamer that runs Android. Now, one such example is the Fio R7. And the R7 really is one of the main reasons that I'm making this video, because frankly, I made a real mess of showing its Apple Music capabilities when we made a review video about it earlier this year. Now, the R7 essentially behaves like a smartphone, but with a DAC, a preamp, and a headphone amplifier attached. And we install the Apple Music app on the R7 from the Google Play Store, just as we would with a smartphone. And that Apple Music app plays CD quality audio and high-res audio just as a smartphone would, right? Because essentially we're using a smartphone app. Moreover, the R7 handles the audio streams bit perfectly because Fio's engineers have routed the digital audio pathways around Android's usual 48K sample rate conversion. We just have to remember to specify high-res lossless in the Apple Music app's settings panel. Not only that, just like a smartphone, we can offline CD quality and high-res streams to the Fio's internal storage. And I think that's pretty damn neat. And in case you're wondering, the R7 is an AirPlay 1 receiver. Now also an AirPlay 1 receiver is the R7 rival, the EverSolo DMP-A6, another Android-based network streamer. Now we don't get the Google Play Store on the DMP-A6, but we can install a slightly customized version of the Apple Music app from the settings panel inside the EverSolo. And like the Fio, the EverSolo handles CD quality and high-res audio streams bit perfectly. And it too allows for the offlining of content. However, the EverSolo one-ups the Fio with a remote control app, like a cast app, that effectively allows us to control the DMPA6 from the comfort of the couch. And that's the one downside of the R7, is that we have to interface with it directly. We have to get hands-on with it but I prefer the sound of the R7, especially when fed by Fio's PL50 linear power supply. And also, I much prefer the screen orientation, the portrait orientation of the Fio because I think it does better justice to the Apple Music app. It's, it's closer to what we experience on a phone. And I gotta say, I really can't get used to the Apple Music app on the Ever Solo being super wide or much wider than it is tall. However, sound quality and user interface judgments aren't really the thrust of this video. It's that both of these Android network streamers allow us to sidestep all the nonsense, all the ifs and the buts and the what ifs when playing CD quality and high res music from Apple Music. Essentially, they just work. So if you like this video, if you found it entertaining and or informative, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards essentially coming back to gear that I really didn't think I did justice to and also using it to answer, I guess, yeah, the most popular question that comes my way, or certainly this year, like how do I get Apple Music and high res into my hi-fi system? I hope this video addresses that question head on. I think it does. If you think it does, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video on YouTube. But if you are watching it on Patreon, you might, might get an extended version with bloopers at the end and extra stuff in the middle here and there because I tend to cut the YouTube version down from the original Patreon edit. And also over on Patreon, I provide all of my patrons with playlists for Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal and Kobos for each video. And those playlists cover off all the music discussed in the video and all the music heard in the interludes. So if you'll consider supporting me on Patreon, even if it's just for a single month, just to buy me a cup of coffee or something, that would be tremendous. Thank you very much.